In the late 1840s, after gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill, California saw a huge influx of immigrant miners seeking to get rich quick. Amongst these immigrants were those from China who sought to improve their economic condition and return home with their newfound riches. My great-great-grandfather, Ching Shen Zheng, was the first sojourner who arrived here around 1849 during the California Girl Rush where he panned the gold fields of the Central Valley. So that's how our first forefather arrived in Angkor Mountain, Gamsam, here in 1849, 171 years ago. As the Chinese community in population centers like San Francisco grew, there was also a growing demand for Chinese cuisine. Chinese immigrants often found themselves craving Chinese cuisine and more importantly, a taste of home. However, as traditional Chinese ingredients were not available in America, Chinese cooks had to get creative. They used readily available American ingredients such as carrots, tomatoes, broccoli, and mushrooms. The Chinese soon found that there was also a lucrative business opportunity in feeding white miners as well. From the early days of the gold rush, the Chinese built an industry catered to serving the needs of the miners, which included providing hot cooked meals. Chinatown is not a glamorous place, it's a ghetto. We were stigmatized to be clustered in the segregated environment. We could not buy property. We could not marry women, even a white woman. We could not bring our wives, our children. It was a bachelor society. And there are very few venues to escape that life, either a, a Chinese hand laundry, a dry goods store, or a chop suey house. So it was a, it was a ticket to the so-called American dream. Over time, more and more Americans found themselves developing a taste for Chinese cuisine. They enjoyed the vibrant, diverse flavor of Chinese cuisine. In turn, the Chinese adapted their cooking to the preferences of their new customer to make it more palatable. This was how many popular dishes, such as chop suey and General Tso's chicken, were born. Restaurants, it's, our history dates from roughly 1917 to 2006. And it's a legacy cuisine called chop suey. Little bits of garnishment and vegetable meats. It's an Americanized version of Cantonese food. The early sojourners were from Guangdong, Canton, or Seya, the four counties. And they brought their foods, their customs. But over time, we dealt with the American and we kind of adapt to their tastes, Americanize it like Panda Express. Chop suey is an example of a dish that resulted from cultural assimilation. It is a dish in American Chinese cuisine and other forms of overseas Chinese cuisine, consisting of meat, often chicken, fish, beef, shrimp or pork, and eggs, cooked quickly with vegetables such as bean sprouts, cabbage, and celery, and bound in a starch-thickened sauce. It is typically served with rice but can become the Chinese-American form of chow mein with the addition of stir-fried noodles. There's a popular myth surrounding the origin of chop suey. There was a Chinese chef who had to feed a bunch of rowdy and hungry miners, but he was all out of food, so he just tossed in a bunch of miscellaneous leftovers to make the dish. And it turned out that they liked it a lot. One December 2003, I went to Santa Barbara to look into my maternal roots, my mother's side. Went to the museum. The documents, the archives were very meager, limited about the Chinese impact in Santa Barbara. I asked one of the mentors or the guides at the museum, hey, where's some good Chinese food? Hey, there's a place down the block. You can find it. I went over there. It's right next to the Presidio in Santa Barbara. Walked in. I asked the server, hey, do you know my grandfather's laundry down the street on 26 East or Turkish Street? No, but my husband might. He brought, he came out, he was a chef. That was Tama Yi Chung, my cousin I never knew about, who was in the chop suey business. So we established that report. That was the, the genesis, the first venture into chop suey for me, that, that journey. As Chinese labor spread around the nation in search of work, they brought their cuisine with them. Communities like Flushing in New York were not only enclaves of Chinese culture and society, but also havens for Chinese food, both authentic and Americanized. 
With this newfound prevalence of Chinese food, Americans began to incorporate it into its practices and culture. For example, ordering Chinese takeout became a fast, cheap option for American families instead of cooking at home, and the ubiquitous Chinese takeout box became an icon of American culture. Uh, if you really want Chinese food, there's always a circuit menu on the side. You can always ask the chef, how about some real Chinese food? Then you can get the gourmet food, the best stuff. But in what you see in the menu, it's the, I call it the whitewash version of Chinese food. It looks palatable, edible, and acceptable to the American mind. With the rapid growth of the Chinese population, many Chinese restaurants developed across the United States and became popular among the Americans. As more and more people grew accustomed to Chinese cuisine, new adaptations were created based upon famous Chinese dishes to cater towards the different tastes of the American people. Restaurants like Panda Express, P.F. Chang's, and etc. are some examples of this. Before 1965, the majority of the Chinese were from Guangdong, Cantonese food. Upon when President Johnson signed the Immigration Act of 1965, it opened the gates to America for all kinds of Chinese to, to come to Gold Mountain, America. And of course, they brought their food, Sichuan, Hunan, Lu cuisine, things of that nature. So it broadened the horizon of the culinary uh, palette for the market. Before it was all chop suey. Now the evolution is multicultural, eth eth authentic Chinese cuisine. Many other restaurants that originate from Asia have made their way to America that preserve the same dish and restaurant culture. One example of this is the famous dim sum restaurant called Din Tai Fung. Din Tai Fung is a very popular restaurant in Asia and is known for their delicious dim sum and unique waiter service. Waiters push around a cart carrying loads of steamer baskets filled with small bite-sized dishes such as chao shao bao, guo tie, and jiao zi paired with a hot serving of tea. Many Americans love this restaurant for these things and as a result, many Din Tai Fung restaurants have been built around California and other states. The current COVID-19 pandemic has severely impacted the perception towards Chinese people as well as Chinese food. Fears over the novel coronavirus sweeping across the country have turned people against Chinese-owned businesses. Chinese restaurants around the world are facing a major challenge from this situation since people started questioning the hygiene of these restaurants. Food traffic in Chinatown area over the U.S. is also down by more than 50%. The owners started losing profits and a lot decided to close down their businesses. While it is possible to contract COVID-19 by eating food handled by an infected person, the risk is extremely small. Given the scarcity of flights from China, it is highly unlikely that anyone you come in contact with in Chinatown has been to China recently. Still, facts and figures haven't stopped the rise of xenophobic actions towards Asian people, especially in major cities. Food is an indirect way of, of a synergy between two cultures and understanding each other, the traditions, the values, the common desire of having a good meal, and the nuance of history, uh, legacy. It's, it's a blending. It, it's like a stew pot. You, you mix it up together and you see what it, it, it come out.